What would John Davies Mullins make of the Library of Birmingham? In 1858, he was appointed chief librarian. So began a city's education in books. The excitement of that was all about liberalising uh, access to books. And I suppose what we're seeing now is an evolution of that again. We're now in the digital age. The first central lending library opened in September 1865. There have been two serious fires. The first in 1879 saw 40,000 books destroyed. By the 1960s, an appetite for reading was growing. So a library built to hold 30,000 books held 750,000. In 1974, the Central Library was officially opened. Some described it as ugly, repugnant, no place for books. Some described it as a bold, inverted ziggurat of floating concrete planes. It was going quite well. But then Prince Charles made his view clear. This was built. It's the Central Library. But how could you tell? It looks like a place where books are incinerated, not kept. It was used by writing groups. People were coming together, doing their own thing there. And that's been very important to keep that grassroots development of creative writing. Central Library attracted 5,000 people a day. When I was a student, I used to go and get books from there. Went in to buy the cast-off books. <laughs> it always seemed very cluttered to me um, and very confusing to get around, but it was easy to find the loop. The Library of Birmingham project was steered by Lord Whitby, the former leader of Birmingham City Council. He's described it as a palazzo of human thought. The heart and soul of people captured within the tombs of books, within a beautiful architectural building, which we in the city of Birmingham had the confidence to say yes to deliver. Never in Birmingham's history has so much money been spent on a library. And history will again judge whether the aims of the founding librarians will have been realised. Ben Godfrey, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham.